Hello everyone, it's Mary Beth, and today I'm gonna to walk you through how you can use timeline and task management in Materio. Now we've had this for a while, but I wanted to do an updated tutorial to announce some of the new things that we have and just go over best practices for this part of the system. So let's dive in. When you first come to your project and you're ready to create a timeline, you're going to click on the left side over here, the timeline tab. And when you land there, you're probably going to see something like this that says create a timeline or use a template. Now, Materio does not have built in templates, but as you start to build out templates on your account, you can go ahead and reuse them. In this case, I'm going to create a timeline from scratch. So I'm going to say create timeline. Now, when you do that, you're going to be dropped into this view over here on the left. This is how we're going to start building out our work phases. And then over here on the right, this is going to be more of a Gantt chart style view. Um, this is where you can kind of navigate through the days and all of that good stuff. But we'll get there in just a minute. So when I'm ready to start outlining a project, the way I want to think about work phases is going to be um, phases that I'm going to use over and over again and are going to be sort of larger chunks or milestones. So for instance, I might start my first phase as client onboarding. And that's because in client onboarding, we're going to have some specific tasks that we want to happen every time we do client onboarding. So in the moment of creating this uh, timeline, I'm also thinking about how I could possibly templatize this for later. So I'm going to click client onboarding and you'll notice over here on the right, client onboarding pops up. This is where I have some capabilities to change the color of the bar on the uh, visual side right here. I can add a description here. So this is when we um, onboard and prepare our client for the project start. Um, it's not going to wait on anything because this is the beginning. And then I can say when it starts. Now I can also implement how many work days I want. Let's say this is going to be um, only four working days. I can do that. If you're overlapping on the weekends, it's naturally going to skip that. So you want to make sure you have your working day set up here. If I drag this bar over the weekend, again, it's going to not count those weekend days. Um, and then you can assign employees to this phase if you'd like to. So I could say that someone on my team is responsible for this. I can also assign subcontractors. Now, of course, in something like client onboarding, that's going to be an internal uh, phase. But eventually, when we get to things like plumbing rough in or something like that, we can assign that to a subcontractor. All right. And then under this phase, this client onboarding phase, there are going to be things that I want to do each time. And we're going to call those plan tasks. So plan tasks, again, are going to be things that when we sit down to think about the project, when we're setting it up from the beginning, we're thinking about the things that we know are going to happen. So I want to do my client intake form. I want to collect, um, or I want to say, let's say I want to send the contract over. I want to uh, send the retainer. And we could also more broadly call this collect a retainer. Um, and so these are just things that we know are going to happen dur during the client onboarding. This might also be, you know, initial consultation, um, anything like that. So this is going to be different for your firm um, than it's not going to be exactly the same, but you may already have this process established. And so you take that out of whatever system you're doing it in right now and put that into Materio so that your project and all the timeline and tasks can be in here together. So we've created plan task here. Now I can separately assign these to other people on my team. So I can click right here and I can assign this to other folks that might be responsible for doing this. I can also set a due date. And if I set a due date, that's going to uh, change the order of the form or of the list here. So if I made this one do, let's say at the very beginning, it's going to show up at the top here and you'll notice that this is also overdue. Um, so it's going to show up as overdue because I set it as February 1st. So you're going to see all of that right here in this phase. And again, I can always add new task in here, assign this entire phase to someone else um, as sort of the owner of it. And then also I can remove it, but we're not going to do that. We're going to keep going with the plan task. All right, so we're moving on to creating our next phase. So this might be the, for instance, the conceptual design here. And then inside of that, we're going to go ahead and do um, initial sketches, create mood boards, 
you know, initial, uh, maybe you want to do the space planning here. So you can break this down however you like. Again, all these planned tasks are going to be things that you know are happening in this phase and that your team is sort of well aware of and sort of on the practice. The thing I want to show you in adding additional phases is that that's going to act just the same, but you can see that now it is coming after client onboarding. So I have this dependency built in. So if I were to go in and shift my timeline, um, it's actually going to push that uh, second item as well. And so you'll see right here, there's a little arrow and that you can see it's dependent on client onboarding. And if you wanna remove this dependency so that they can live independently, you can do that. You can also make them, um, let's say we're gonna do schematic design. We can also make these both dependent on the client onboarding. Let's say we're gonna do both. We can have all of these dependent on each other. And as I push and pull them, they're going to move um, just like that. Now, if I wanted to kind of zoom in, I can kind of shorten this up here. And this allows me to drag in and look more closely at this. All right, so that is setting up project phases, uh, work phases, and plan task. Once you get a template in here that you really like, let's say you're doing a lot of full home remodels, or you're doing um, a bunch of kitchens, you might want to create a template that you can reuse. If you're ready to do that, just click on this gear icon and say, uh, save new template. So I might call this uh, kitchen design template, and I will save it here. Now, when I go to create a new project, if it is a kitchen and I want to use this template again, I can just easily pull that in. I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. All right, now what you're not going to do in plan task is going to be just kind of one-off task. And those tasks might be return this thing or specifically do this one thing for this one client. These are gonna be totally random and one-off. They're not gonna be something that you can plan. And there are a few places that you can put those. So you can come in here and just type in other task. Let's say you want to return the damaged uh, side table, you could do that, hit enter, and then you can also click on this task. You can add in more notes. You can assign this to someone else on your team. You can have material notify you when it's done. And then you can also set a due date as well as add attachments. So you might wanna add a return label here or uh, some sort of receipt or something like that. This is gonna give the people on your team doing this work, whatever they need to get this done. You can also see the task on this project up here in this task widget to be tasks that are assigned to me that are within phases or one-off tasks. So let's say I have a quick task that I need to add. I can go ahead and just add that in right here. It's going to show up on the other task list, and it's also going to be on my list. Now, you'll notice that Maddie's task is not showing up in this widget because this is my personal checklist at the top of this specific project. Now, if we want to get into further tasking, we can also go over to the main dashboard. All right, so now that we're on your dashboard, we're going to go over task and how those show up here and how you can take a look at anyone on your team's task that are currently in Materia. Your dashboard on the right side, you have your open task. This is where you're going to see task per project as well as company-wide task if there are any of those, as well as tasks that you're following. So this is going to be if you are in line to be notified about that task specifically. So on the top here under open task, this is where you can come in and create a new task, like say return the side table as our earlier example, and then you're going to be able to assign it to a specific project. Say that you're creating a company level task, for instance, you have an admin who is helping you with sourcing projects, but is also posting to social media. Go ahead and add in a task here, like create client testimonial and post and then you just hit enter. And then at the top of this list is actually the company, which means it's no project. It's simply a company wide task. So you can track those right here. Now, let's say it's Monday morning. You as a team are all sitting down to figure out what everyone's doing this week. Maybe what was accomplished that wasn't checked off before. I can go ahead and go to see everyone's. And here you're going to be able to see things that are not started, things that are in progress, and then things that have been done. And this is where you might say, actually, I already did that. This is in progress. Now it's done. I can go ahead and mark those as done and clear them off. Maybe if I didn't get to it, I could reassign it to someone else and move it back to uh, open. You can also filter down here by specific projects. So if you're wanting to focus in on a specific project and see what everyone has on that one really important project this week, you can absolutely do that right here. And you can also filter down by team members and their specific task. So this is a great way to see what's going on across the company, across projects, and across all the teammates. 
Just a note here that on any task in Materio, you can always click it, add in information, assign it to someone else, uh, assign someone to be notified when the task is complete, as well as add attachments and a due date. Now, there are a few other ways that the timeline can be really handy when you're running a project. So I want to go over what those are. Over here on the left side, you'll see that we have selections due, other decisions due, shipping soon, and upcoming deliveries. I'm going to actually add it in a selection that is due. This means that we can select any category of selections that are in our scope of work. Let's say we want all the electrical items to be decided by the 23rd of February. We can go ahead and save that. It's going to show up here as electrical selections due. This is going to show up with question marks because we haven't decided these yet. But as they are decided, you'll see check marks go there. So this is just going to keep you in line. And then if you send the progress report with the timeline, your client will also see that these selections are upcoming. The other thing you can do on the timeline is set other decisions. And this might be things like floor plan revisions or uh, milestone payments or anything you want to do uh, to keep your team in line. This is totally customizable. So let's say we want to do floor plan revisions um, and maybe we want to go ahead and plan out multiple revisions, we can go ahead and say, okay, that's going to be on the 29th. We're going to save that. So these are just decisions that we want to make and we want to go ahead and set on the calendar to set expectations for our team and our clients. Now the shipping soon section is going to link up with the purchase orders. So as I'm tracking products, those are going to show up here. So let me show you an example. All right, so we're gonna head over to our order section. Let's say that we've received an email that this item has shipped. I'm gonna go ahead and come right here to shipments and do add. I'm gonna go ahead and select the tracking number, paste it in for my email. It's shipped today, it's arriving uh, on Friday. I'm going to go ahead and say that it is shipped and then I'm going to hit save. And when I do that, Matero is gonna ask me if I wanna add it as shipped. I'm going to say yes. And then if I head back over to my timeline, you will see that I now have an upcoming delivery of wall light. And that's because I went ahead and I scheduled this here. I can click the tracking information and it is already scheduled to arrive. All right, if I come to my selections workspace, and you'll usually have much more than this, if I go ahead and click ordered and I want to update it to shipped in this way, I can also put in the information, update who the carrier is, and schedule the arrival on my timeline. And when I do that, it's also going to show up over here on my timeline as a delivery that is expected. I have an item that has been labeled as shipping soon right here. This is going to happen because when I place the order, if I say an, there's an estimated ship date or if my vendor submits an estimated ship date to me, that is going to show up over here in the timeline as a shipping soon item. The distinction to make here is that when we are told an item is going to ship soon, whether by a vendor or when we track that PO, that's going to show up in shipping soon. And then once we've actually marked it as shipped and we've in an estimated delivery date, that is where it's going to be scheduled as an upcoming delivery. You can always hover here, scroll down again, and view the history or more information about that item. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me to learn about the timeline and task management in Materio. There are so many things we want to add to this to make it more automated and advanced. If you have any ideas or questions about what you need, please reach out to us at hello at Materio.co.